Are Iranians European? A genetic analysis of Iran. It started with the skull of a woman buried in Iran's Zagros Mountains. Her DNA wasn't European, not even close. No link to Anatolian farmers. Instead, it revealed something older, stranger. A forgotten lineage buried in time. So, are Iranians European by history? Or do their genes tell a completely different story? In 2016, in what is now Western Iran, a team of researchers, led by Fernaz Bershaki, sequenced DNA from the petrous part of the temporal bone in the skull of an early Neolithic pastoralist woman at Ganj Dera, and what they discovered started a drive to trace Iran's ancestry and figure out who Iranians really are. The DNA became the world's earliest known pastoralist genome, but something in particular about it was strange. The ancient woman had no genetic relationship with the Anatolian farmers who later spread agriculture into Europe. Instead, her DNA matched hunter-gatherers from the Caucasus. It had a high proportion of basal Eurasian ancestry, which is a lineage that split off before most other Eurasian groups and is abundant in Zagros, but rare or absent in ancient Europeans. Although Zagros Neolithic herders are regarded as major contributors to modern South Asian genes, their DNA made only minimal impact on that of native Europeans because they were largely bypassed by the Anatolian migration that influenced early European genomes. Some studies from researchers like Broshaki confirm that while Iran's early farming groups moved eastward into South Asia, they remained genetically separate from Anatolian farmers who became the foundation of European Neolithic ancestry. The discovery didn't end there. In fact, it was just the start of what researchers found out about Iranians' DNA. About 10,000 years ago, around the same time the early Neolithic pastoralist woman was alive, farmers from the Zagros Mountains, who were different from the Anatolian farmers who moved into Europe, began to influence the genetic makeup of the people around them. Recent DNA studies have shown that Neolithic herders from the Gonjdera were genetically distinct from their Anatolian neighbors and instead shared strong ties with Caucasus hunter-gatherers, the same group detected in later populations across South Asia. This Zagros ancestry didn't end up just staying in Iran, it traveled east. It's a major part of modern Iranian genomes and early South Asian populations, including those in the Indus Valley Civilization. Genome-wide studies confirm that Zagros ancestry is abundant in ancient South Asian DNA, appearing long before steppe or East Asian influence. What's striking is what's missing. Almost no Anatolian farmer DNA, the core of Europe's Neolithic ancestry. This basically means that the Zagros gene pretty much carved its own path eastward while sidestepping Europe. Then things started to get more interesting as the years went by. By the early Chalcolithic period, which was around 5000 BCE, small groups of different DNA began to mix into the Zagros gene pool. DNA from Antolian, Levantine, and Caucasus groups appeared in sites like Golafshantepe, where one genome retained Ganjdera ancestry but showed 17% admixture from newcomers. Even those famous steppe pastoralists, the ones related to the Yanmea culture that stormed across parts of Europe, showed up here too, but barely. Researchers found subtle signs of this steppe-related ancestry beginning in the Chalcolithic and continuing through the Bronze Age, unlike in Europe, where steppe migrations influenced entire populations. Northern Iran kept its core identity intact in the DNA of the Zagros people, with only a few genetic additions from foreign groups. Then in the Achaemenid and the Hellenistic eras, for over 3,000 years, the people living in northern Iran held on to something rare in human history – genetic stability. According to recent 2025 paleogenomic research, the DNA found in ancient skeletons from as far back as the Neolithic era all the way to the Sassanid Empire shows a strong line of continuity. This basically means that even though the region was ruled by different empires and experienced countless cultural changes, the DNA of the natives didn't change much. They still had the same core ancestry that came from those first herders and early farmers of the Zagros Mountains. 
Through the chaos of time, their DNA surprisingly remained the same. But that doesn't mean there weren't any changes at all. Groups like the Scythians, Greeks, Arabs, Mongols, and Turks all entered Iran at different times. But while these invasions formed Iranian language, religion, and art, their genetic imprint was pretty small. The ancient DNA shows only small tweaks with the genomes of these groups, and the slight differences depending on where the native Iranians lived. Coastal communities near the Caspian Sea had more foreign influences, while people living inland, deeper in the Iranian plateau, kept more of that ancient Zagros DNA. When it comes to language, you can notice the slight influences too. If you drive up the slopes of northern Iran, along the southern edge of the Caspian Sea, for example, you'll find communities that don't sound like the rest of the country. The Gilaks and the Mazandaranis speak dialects that seem oddly out of sync with the native Iranian language called Persian. But at the same time, you can tell they somewhat sound like people across the Caucasus. When scientists looked at their DNA, they found that these groups have noticeably higher amount of Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry than most other Iranians. These people didn't come from Georgia or Armenia recently. Thousands of years ago, migrations from the Caucasus moved to the Caspian coast and ended up influencing the genes and even the languages of the people. What's amazing is how this genetic history actually lines up with the subtle quirks in the way that these groups speak. Galaki and Mazandarani languages don't descend directly from standard Persian but seem to have more in common with Northwest Iranian dialects and even Kartvelian patterns. Curious to know if there's any deep relationship between Iranians and Asians, scientists began tracing the roots of South Asia's oldest civilizations, like the Indus Valley Civilization. No matter how many times they traced the ancestry, they kept hitting the same genetic trail that led back to ancient Iran, so they were right. Iranians did have some sort of connection with Asian genes, but how and why? Well, thousands of years ago, long before the rise of India's cities or Vedic scripts, people from the Zagros region in western Iran began to marry and procreate with the indigenous hunter-gatherers of South Asia, a group known as Ancient Ancestral South Indians, or AASI for short. The result of this procreation was something entirely new, a gene that would form the first Indus Valley population. But this wasn't a one-time migration. Studies show where several migrations, including an early Neolithic movement from Iranian farmers, followed by later Bronze Age contacts that added more Iranian ancestry into the mix, without bringing much from Europe. Sadly, this is where Iran's role gets underestimated. Like most people think, it wasn't just a country between Mesopotamia and India. It was the starting point of people who moved eastward and built one of the world's first urban cultures. Modern-day South Asians still have slight traces of that Zagros DNA, especially in the northwest regions of India and Pakistan. And what's even more interesting about this is that while Iranian ancestry significantly moved to South Asia, it actually barely touched Europe in the same way during this period. Now, modern Iranian DNA is so diverse because it isn't just from one era or influence, but from thousands of years of continuity and contact to become one that contrasts with Europe's. European ancestry is from Anatolian farmers, Western hunter-gatherers, and Yanmea steppe ancestry, especially after the Bronze Age. Iranians, on the other hand, don't have that same genetic mix. Instead, they have a DNA that has a much older lineage, including the Basel Eurasians and Zagros Neolithic populations. While Iran did get some step in Eurasian admixture later, it never experienced the same massive genetic turnovers that defined Europe. Instead, Iran's population held on to its original ancestry and changed more slowly. That's why it's considered misleading to treat Iran as almost European, or put it into the same ancestry group as European. Genetically, Iran has its own distinct history as ancient and diverse as Europe's. If you enjoyed this exploration of Iranian DNA, then like this video and let us know in the comments. 
to stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analysis on these ancient people, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos.